Oh my goodness, Owen, I think we're live. We're live. Don't swear. Don't swear. Is, is Don't you talk about any other clients. That truth you've is become, Don't talk about them anymore. You think you've become Davina McCall. We're live. Please do not swear. Yeah, we're live. Please do not swear. Yeah. <laughs> Except I don't have abs like Davina can call at the moment. Um, okay, so um, we're live. Um, hopefully, some of you are on LinkedIn are are accessing 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 us live. Um, this is being recorded, so it will be sh shared on YouTube and various other places later. Um, we, if you could just um, put something in the comments, just so that I know that there is somebody seeing us that would be great uh to know that this is working um that would be great uh let's just go into the comments um so we will be discussing various things today We're, it's all going to be about coronavirus um a job retention scheme otherwise known as furlough um so i am with um my lovely associate, Owen Clark. Hi, Hello. Owen. Hello, Nikki. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi. So, Owen's joining us. He's an associate director at Peninsula, so he knows lots and lots about the HR and legal aspects of CJRS. Um, I'm the uh, owner and founder of Gorange Accountants, so from the perspective of calculations and also the HMRC perspective, um, hopefully I can answer anything. So basically we're going to go through various different things today um, to, to, to talk about where are we now, where are we today with CJRS? Um, or otherwise known as furlough, um, but also we are here to answer any of your questions. Um, so hopefully um, you can see us, fingers crossed. Um, okay, now I'm just going to, because I haven't had any comments come in yet, so I am just going to just double check on from a LinkedIn thing that we can actually see us because um, hopefully the notifications will have come up. Um, it's our first one. So this is a little soft launch today. So, you know, hopefully there won't be as many issues as GB News, but um, hopefully it will be all good. Um, Yep, I can't see anything on there. Oh, yes. Yay, Tori's there. Right, thank goodness. We do know we're live. So that's good. We are, and people can hear us, see us. So we are up against, we're, we're doing well so far. Fantastic. Thanks, Tori. Okay, so we're going to go, there's four main topic areas with CJRS, which, which we wanted to go through. Um, so we're about just basically what are the changes? Um, oh, so that's probably five things. So summary of what, what the changes, um, but also, so, you know, it's winding down now. We're in the winding down stage of furlough. So, you know, we might be in the situation that you think, I really don't need this level of staff anymore. You know, my business has changed or I'm expecting it to do X, Y, Z. So I do have to look at redundancies. So what do you have to do if you transition from CJRS to redundancies? Um, secondly, reluctant workers. You know, if if you've had some, if you've had staff off for 18 months, that's going to be a big culture shock for them to coming back to work. So what we're going to look at um, what, what the transition back, um, what things as employers you should or shouldn't or cat could be doing. Um, what are the other things? Uh, there was, um, oh, HMRC. They obviously, there's been a huge amount of fraud in CGRS, unfortunately. Um, so there's going to, there are thousands of letters that are already on people's doorsteps um, to launching potential investigations. So we're going to go through, I'll take that topic, what to do if those one of those letters have hit you. Um, and then what was the fourth thing that we were going to talk about? Do you recall? I think we were going to, I think we were going to talk about the vaccine and uh, how the vaccine was going to affect businesses. 
Facts, absolutely. Right, so shall we start there then, Owen? Do you know, so so you you were telling me earlier about there's there's been some very specific legal changes and things. So so what what do we do? You know, as an employer, I w I've got a duty of care to my employees and to my clients, customers. You know, I you know I'm all for vaccine. You know, I think it's a way to, for us to get out of this situation. What 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 do, what do we do as employers if if staff aren't taking the vaccine or refusing etc. What can we or can't we or should we be doing? Okay, so so far legally we have the government who have confirmed that they will require staff of care homes to have the vaccine. That they can now mandate that for their for their staff. I think that's going to come with various legal challenges. Who will start uh, saying that the you know human rights that they they have or they haven't got to? I think the 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 key aspect there is all around personal care. It's around health and safety aspects of making sure that they're they're looking after the health and safety and well-being of people within the care home. That being said, the government have also said they're going to start looking at some of the other industry and some other industries as well. So I think this is really one that we've got to keep our eye out on what the what the legislators are saying, what's coming, likely to become on the statute book. But I think, moreover, from a holistic approach, from a business point of view, um, uh, certainly we at Peninsula and lots of other big businesses, are, and, and you mentioned yourselves as well, it's, I think it's a positive thing to be enforcing and getting rid of some of the misnomers around the vaccine and what it will and won't, won't do, being respectful to people's uh, opinions on, on the vaccine, but also the not necessarily uh, going as far as mandating it, but encouraging and positively encouraging the, the, the good impact that the vaccine will have on business, on your indi own individual business, but as a society in whole and getting the, the economy and businesses going back open, getting back open sooner or more quickly. So I think some positive reinforcement from, from business leaders to their staff um, and, and being open to, to have conversations around uh, the positive side of having the vaccine, I think it's really important getting people back to work. Yeah, and that's the, the, the positive side and the positive reinforcements is really, yeah, that's, there was something that I read this week um, where somebody was saying, you know, the, the, their particular employer wanted them to have it. However, then when it came to the fact that, well, I've got to go and have it, I might be then a bit ropey for a day or two. Now I have my second vaccine this week. Everyone in my team knows that I was a bit ropey for a couple of days, but you know, so you know, it's you get the vaccine, but then you've got to accept that you've got to be then flexible for the staff if they don't feel brilliant for a couple of days. Uh, absolutely, it's, it's about that flexibility. And if you are going to be pro pro vaccine and you, you're going to encourage the staff to have the vaccine, one, you know, in making sure that the staff are, are fully aware that they can have time off, that is paid time off to go and have the vaccine is, a, is obviously yeah. a positive thing. Where possible, you know, before work or after work, so it doesn't have a bigger impact. But obviously, if it has to be during work, work time, that you're going to get paid for doing it. Yeah. And yeah, and if you are going to be uh, off seat and you are going to have a couple of days, is, is having some level of kind of understanding that different people have reacted differently to the vaccine. And, and rather than maybe implementing your normal and standard, uh, you know, if you don't turn up to work, you just get SSP. That, you know, is there a middle ground? Is there some kind of conversation that can be struck so that that isn't so that people aren't worrying about if they don't get paid for two days, how that's going to impact them, and they don't want to bother just in case that impacts them. I think is a I think is a very fair point. Very fair. Brilliant. Okay, just a reminder for all of you out there who are very kindly watching our debut on the business broadcast. Um, please do. We've got comments uh, comment section. Um, so please do say hi. Um, do put your point of view in. Um, if you've got questions, do put, put them in. Um, you know, Owen and I, we're, we're absolutely happy to answer any questions off the bat in this area. Um, we deal with it day in, day out. So no problem whatsoever just asking anything, even if it's slightly, slightly, you think might be slightly off the topic. You know, Owen has said, I'll cover all tax accounting, HMRC, et cetera. Owen's all over it for uh, HR and employment law um, and also health and safety. So, yes. so a nice breadth of, of experience to, to, to help anything with you. So do, do say hi, ask a comment, uh, ask a question, put a comment, 
um, all, all good, all good. Um, and Tori, as I know you're listening, do remind the others to make sure that they are joining in as well, please. Just pop a reminder on Teams, that'd be super. Um, okay, so next one. Let's, let's just have a recap, Owen. Where are we on, where, what can we as employers, if we used to have still people on CJRS, how, lo how much longer have we got? How, and how much do we get? What, what's, what's the current situation? So uh, at the moment, we the funding uh, has been cut from uh, from Thursday, uh, from the first of uh, from yesterday, from the first. Uh, employers will now have to contribute ten percent uh, of their fur of the furloughed amount. So we are uh, furloughed employee would still get a maximum of 80 percent uh, up to two thousand five hundred for any unworked hours, two thousand five hundred in, in gross pay, and then a job retention scheme will pay up to seventy percent. A maximum of uh, of two thousand one hundred and eighty seven pound and fifty pence, um, but the so employer the must pay ten percent. That's the key yes. change in it. Is that extra ten percent, which the employer is having to contribute? That so that's the extra bit to people's co cost that they're having to cover. And every month that's going to ratchet, as well as now having to to pay some of the the uh, the contributions. As we now move forward month by month, there's going yeah. to be a change month by month. And I think it's important that business owners now start to think about that plan for where are we going to go? We've got people on furlough. How long can we sustain that for? And ultimately looking into the future and seeing, you know, uh, is it is it fundamentally viable for them to continue down that road and for how much longer is it, is it viable yeah and and, and that this is 64 billion pounds already spent on cjrs and just remember this is where businesses have been implementing it properly it's 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 subsidizing people's pay who aren't working so actually the is the business is not this is not helping people businesses profit this is just preventing having to make redundancies or cutting down hours etc um so oh good question got a good question here let's check check i can do that oh see i'm learning the technology already so lovely pete when um owen when's the final month when we get back to normal when do we get no help on CGRS. When, when does that stop? I believe it's October and I'm just going to pull up the, the final figures but I believe it's October is the final yeah. month for the, for the, yeah. uh, for the right. September's last September at the moment and that's still what it's saying on the HMRC website that's the last the last claim. Yeah, yeah. let me just have a confirmation of, of the, yeah. the months that's and what the, the claims are. In this area yeah. things are sorry. changing all the time so we have to be Sorry, <laughs> sorry. the Yep. Sorry, to be clear, the last claim can be made in October. Sorry. So your question is, when when does the money go back to normal? September. When is the last open opportunity for you to process the claim? 14th of October is that is that date. Fantastic. So Good the question. The last amount in September, the last claim period is the 14th yep. of October. The claim has to be in by then. Okay. So, so for those businesses that are going, oh, my goodness, I can't afford to have to subsidize people that are now on the bench and um, they're still on the bench unfortunately um and even worse in october i'd have to pay everything and they still might i still might not have work for still might not have work for them in, in october so so you know we're going to have to start looking at redundancies or cutting hours or whatever else what what what's what what would you say what's the first thing that you need to do in that area owen I think it's uh, I think it's about having an idea and, and ensuring that if you're going to potentially look at redundancies, which is ultimately what we're talking around, I don't think it's, it's let's not try and dress it up. Unfortunately, some people and some businesses are going to have to look at potential redundancies. If if that is the the case, um, it's ma making sure that that you're not picking on the individuals. It's yep. the role and the reasons as to why that's going to happen. Obviously, at the moment, very clearly, there's going to be economic cases for some businesses as to why they're going to have to do it. But is it the is it the uh, because of the changes? Two roles are now done by one person, and that person's able to do it from home, uh, and that other role doesn't now exist. Uh, what are the reasons behind it? But very clearly, it's about the role. It's not about the individual, and that's the bit that m businesses need to be careful about. This yeah. isn't an opportunity to to move a, a, a less favourable employee on than another one. 
it's about yeah. the role that they're, they're fulfilling for the business absolutely yeah that's completely it so if you've got i know say you've got 10 administrators in your company you've got to put them all in the pool for potential redundancy but then if you're only actually making five of them because you need five you know, you've got to cut them down. You've got to then have a, it's, you know, we've been there, done there before, before, before COVID. You've got, not, not in our organisation, but I've done it when I've been working in multinationals before. And we've, you know, it's a bit, usually often, that's the thing in, in large companies, it's your often an annual exercise anyway. But um, yeah, so, so you normally have firm criteria of how you select. So, um, then they have to be reasonable, don't they? Yeah, so you, first things first is you need to create a business case for the redundancy. What would yeah. the business case involve? Well, one, the background, why are we potentially needing to look at a redundancy first and foremost? Secondly, what's the what's the lead, business, businesses should take a position of? What's our legal position? And what, sh, what would happen if it went wrong? What is our liability? I think it's always worth looking at that. Then it's about looking at the current current and financial trading positions of the business and a, and a clear evidence in reduction, potentially a reduction of work, reduction of income, changes of roles. Um, next, I think uh, profit and profit and loss and looking at profit and loss and how that works. Yeah. Um, have we looked at other alternatives? Have we considered different ways of doing uh, doing things other than redundancy? Um, yeah. Having a, a clear organisational chart. Um, uh, of where the current position is, um, look at the proposed redundancies and, and then consult other consultation ideas. So going to the staff and asking if there are other ideas, um, a, a proposed uh, org chart of, of what it would look like post redundancies uh, and then some timelines of, of when those things are, are going to happen. Um, yeah. And then offering, and I think importantly, one of the things that we cannot escape from is that uh, over this this period of the last 18 months things have changed massively for people and some level of support for the individuals that may be going through so have you got an eap program in place that could support and underpin uh, a process for you so they can go and seek some support and advice uh, themselves so that's the sort of business proposal uh, yeah. that you need to pull together Excellent. Oh, we've got another couple of great questions. Um, so first we've got um, the lovely Victoria. Um, can you make an employee redundant whilst they are on furlough? Yes, you can. However, the job retention scheme has changed. When the job retention scheme first came out, you were able to use the job retention scheme to help pay the notice under furlough. Mm -hmm. You no longer cannot use the job risk retention scheme to pay the notice period. So when you make them redundant, you cannot pay uh, them from the job retention scheme. That has to come from your own funds, not from the job. Oh, retention interesting. So, okay, so, so that's you know, so that's still good. But you know, whether you do it now or whether you do it in three months, you've got to pay it anyway. So you're going you to have make that decision. Last last year, many people took the uh, to the to the financial position. Because um, the, the the guidance wasn't particularly clear as to if I now make this person redundant and then notice, and let's say they're on three months notice, can I get the government to pay eighty percent of the notice? The answer was yes, because mm -hmm. they didn't say any uh, otherwise. Now they clarified it and said yeah. no, you cannot pay three months notice at eighty percent and payment on the job retention scheme. That okay. once they're done, that's for for you to pay. So can you? Yes, you can. Um, but the job retention scheme will not pay for the notice period on that. Super. Hope that, hope, hopefully that answers that okay for you, Tori. Um, another question from Pete, who's busy today. Um, so does the time on furlough count towards the calculation of how much someone should be paid in redundancy? Good question. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a good question. And yes, they are still fully employed and contracted to you. So yes, it would count towards their continuity of employment for you. Then yes would still count so if say somebody joined you in march they, as soon as they clicked over another year that other year would count towards their would count towards their redundancy and also on the same note um, if somebody's on uh, on furlough their holiday calculation still keeps her and they're still entitled to holiday so again uh, an important thing to look at is to do we uh, let people accrue holiday or while people are on on furlough should we make them use some of the holiday and should we enforce them taking some of the holiday which you can uh, you can also do 
Super. Okay. Um, so I think we've covered a lot on the redundancy. I, I'd just say, make sure when you're doing your business case, fit it into your business plans as well, because you have got to think about, you know, if you are going to have people on the bench uh, or, you know, and that's why you're thinking redundancies, do you think about, well, actually, how long would be, they be on the bench? Because, you know, if you are thinking on your business plan, actually, everything, the activity is going to be picking up in a few months, you need to compare, well, you've got the moral thing of really, you know, whether you want to make people redundant or not, if you can afford not to. But secondly, um, if you're going to actually need extra resource, so you could actually compare the stress and the strain and the cost of recruitment, you know, if you're, if you're thinking, well, actually, I'm going to be, yeah, it's going to be quiet now because this is my quiet season, but actually Christmas, it's all going to pick up again. Actually, I'd be having to recruit. Think about, well, actually, do I just therefore continue with the, the CGRS as long as I can, then pay them myself for a while, even if they're twiddling their thumbs, um, and then, then, but at least then it's saving me on the recruitment later. So do you think about how, you know, it, are these jobs really gone forever? And also, that's a, sorry, it's a good point that I've just made myself in my head, um, <laughs> that um, if you are making somebody, if you're making a role redundant, is it is it six months that you can't recruit into that role again, Owen? Is that right? You're right. It's six months. Yeah, however, six months. however, I, I think there is going to be a certain for the first time in a long time. There's going to be uh, cases made at the time of making the decision. The role was redundant. We wasn't. We weren't expecting to be business to pick up, and that role was redundant. However, four months down the line, we won a contract that came out of the blue that we weren't expecting. So need to. If that person came back and said, well, um, can I have my role back? I think there's a, an area that we need to consider that. But also, if then somebody made a claim, I think there's also a, a good a good defence to say, we're living in unexpected times. We didn't know that was going to happen. So again, even more important why the business case was very clear and concise and the process that you undertook was, was well done. Yeah. And, and good comment. I mean, we, we will be doing some um, talent and recruitment uh, live, uh, LinkedIn live uh, business broadcasts as well soon, because that is a very hot topic at the moment. Um, and P comments, there's such a talent shortage. There's such a talent shortage at the moment. That if you thought you might need them in the next six months, I'd hold on. That's that's the word from up north where Pete says. Okay, so um, we've covered CGRS, the changes. We've covered um, redundancy. We've covered vaccines. So two things left is is um, reluctant coming back people and also um, investigation. So so just a have you got a couple tips, Owen, on you know of easing people back in. Yeah, I think it's a case of, again, looking at your business and looking where your business is. Has it changed? I know a lot of the businesses that I'm speaking to have actually found that uh, COVID has brought them uh, into a more comfortable place and actually can save them some money because actually home working has worked really well for them. Um, I would throw in a, a note of caution. There has been some, uh, there's been uh, in, the, um, in the news, there's been some information around the right to disconnect. The right from people who are especially working from home being able to walk away turn their phone off and disconnect from work so we need to consider that if we're going to move to the principle of home working so note of caution if that's you're going to close down an office and you're going to think about home working right to disconnect you need to have a look at that and get a policy in place for that I think yeah that's, no, that's a really good point because um yeah and i've i've I must admit, I've got to put my hands up. I'm sometimes bad at that. If I wake up and think of a, a, an issue and I send an email out and yeah, go restart. I've got to really, you know, make use of um, deferred email sending. Yes. <laughs> Don't harass your staff at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, do, do 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 try try and respect office hours or whatever the working hours are. Um, try and respect those as much as possible because you know you do for your own sanity um, whether you're the business owner or the employee you do need to make sure you do have a distinction 
between work time and, and, and home time, definitely. That's a yeah. really, really good point. And I think if you are going to do it, guys, uh, it's really important to have that policy in place. If you're going to change from somebody who was expected to work in his office to working from home, right to, to disconnect policy is really important. So I think that's one thing that we need to consider. And I yeah. think the, the other thing is if you are going to bring them back to the office, I think that leads into people's nervous, nervousness and trepidation of coming back to the office making sure from a health and safety point of view, the office is COVID secure, it's COVID compliant, you're still following the, the rules and procedure as, as there are at the moment. And I know there's a, a, a lot of talk of, um, well, the, you know, football fans at the moment, they're not doing it, so why should I? Um, that isn't that isn't going to fly as far as the business is concerned. You will still be expected to make sure that you're COVID secure and COVID supply, compliant and making sure that you've offered that duty of care to to uh, your employees when they come back to the office. Oh, interesting, eh? because I mean, there's lots of there's lots of rumours about what's going to happen from the 19th of July. You know, there's from the thinking that actually some of some things are going to continue. Um, and then other people are saying, no, everything's going to be it's mar masked in the bin, scrapping social distancing, etc. I mean, I've already made it clear to my team that regardless of what the government's saying, we're going to continue social distancing and limiting the number of people in our office, you know, until we feel it's safe, safe to, 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 to go back to normal. But, but what, 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 what have you heard in the rumours um, as it affects business? What, what are you expecting to happen? But the health and safety, uh, the health and safety side of things is very clear. You must do all that is reasonable and all that is practicable to ensure the health and safety and well-being of your staff. Um, not everybody from July will have had their vaccine. No, and, especially and, if you've got a lot of young staff. Most of my young staff, you know, most of them, I think, now have had their first, but they're, you know, they're going to be at least a couple of months off from having their second. Absolutely. And, there's, and there, there is there's still the possibility. I've, I have a friend who's been double vaccinated and he has caught COVID. Um, yeah. it, you know, it's not 100% for no, it's not 100%. So uh, I think into that point, we, we work on the basis of do everything that's reasonable and practicable. And it is reasonable and practicable to ensure that you're following social distancing guidelines, that your office is a safe working environment from a COVID point of view. So I think reassurance from that point of view from health and safety point of view you're doing all that is reasonable and practicable uh, and and i think also easing people back into it rather than going from day dot you've got to all come back into the office i think regularly managing your staff to come back in periodically to the point where they are back full time is 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 a sensible is a sensible approach that said businesses may need people back in they may not be able to substantiate people working from home and may need to have a, a hard yeah. stop and be able to do it and then again back to the health and safety aspect if you're going to do it do it but do it in a safe and secure way absolutely yeah you've got to put you've got to put your staff first definitely um just very quickly we've only got a few minutes left so i'm just going to go through um what seems to be happening with hmrc so as we are aware from the press and everything, um, and you know, inspectors we know, there seem to be about 13,000 letters that have been sent out to various businesses, um, not just about CGRS, some are covering SEISS and various other things, but you know, a lot of it is about CJRS, so, so furlough. So um, just some quick things to, to, if you've had a letter, um, about querying to, to start an investigation on your CJRS scheme, so your furlough claims. Firstly, don't panic. Don't panic is the first thing. Second thing is speak to whoever's been preparing it, whether you've been preparing the calculations internally or if your accountant has been, let them know as soon as possible. Um, thirdly, contact HMRC to confirm, yes, I've had this letter, yes, I'm happy to share information, etc. Because it, the letter will have happened for one of two reasons. Either it's just a general, general letter that they're just fishing, 
a fishing expedition. So you may be in the situation, you've done all your CGRS claims absolutely correctly, you've had your advice of your accountants, you've had advice from your employment lawyers and your HR people, and so you're confident that you know you worked within the guidelines, which to be honest, at the beginning, the guidelines were very loose. So, you know, they have 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 ramped up over the time with more information. Um, so firstly, gather up together. You make, need to make sure you've got all those calculations. Make sure um, that you've got all the documentation of what you've sent to your employees, etc. Make sure you've got that all available. Um, the and, and then you can share it because it, if you're in the situation that it's just a fishing exposition, Yes, it's going to be a pain in the ass. It's going to be time consuming. You're going to have to talk to HMRC, but you know, don't worry about it if you have got it got it in place. If you are one of our clients, we are covered. Um, well, it was by Markel, but very shortly it's going to buy but Corona tax wise. So you don't worry. We will be able to help you with those responses. Um, do look, you might already have your own policy or your accountant might have it. Or if you're or if you're with the FSB or someone like that, they've probably got access to help you with that. The other reason why they may have sent you is if you've had a whistleblower. So somebody may have genuinely been right and reported you. If, if you've had staff that have been working, but you have been claiming CJRS, you know, what I would recommend if that is return the money, return the money as soon as possible. Then there isn't so much an issue. Do it quickly. Get that money returned. If you've if you've done it accidentally or deliberately or whatever, just get that money to, and try and get that 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 extinguished. Um, if you've done it deliberately and it sort of keeps going on, then you're going to need professional advice. So please then do talk to a specialist tax advisor or tax lawyer um, and, and get advice if you've made your, get, got yourself in a really big pickle. Um, but there are people out there, what you don't do is don't just go and put it on the too difficult pile. You need to deal with it. Okay, well, that's, I think that was jam packed full of information for our first LinkedIn Live. Thank you so much, Owen. Thank you so nice. much. My pleasure. Thank you very much. For, thank you very much for having me on your first. I feel privileged oh, to be the first. Be the first. Absolutely. Well, you're pretty brilliant. And thank you so much for battling the A40 to get to us. That's fantastic. Um, and also just to shout out to Pete, who helped with some of the technical setup this morning. So thank you very much for that. So hopefully it's all going to work and we've all recorded and it's um, hopefully there's something um, to um, as a, you, something you've learned from there and uh, please do if you um, need any extra help feel free to contact myself um, or Owen we're both on LinkedIn um, so you know we're here to help you know you know we we, we offer always um, free consultations to begin with at very we're, we're big advocates for the business community we want we're here to help you um, so thank you and look forward to seeing everyone again next week uh friday 12 30 uh so we will try for 12 30 next week depending as long as our guest doesn't have a car a traffic issue um do let us know as well what particular hot topic you'd like us to cover and thank you very much thanks owen bye thanks guys